I'm Helen Van Wyck, and welcome to my studio. We speculate a lot about the Impressionists, and we really love their paintings because it's, they seem so carefree and and bohemian, and it seems as though all they did was just sit down and paint and have a wonderful time. But Monet's many, many paintings of one subject, such as his many pictures of, of, of a haystack, proves that he was searching. He was searching for an effect. It was really a painterly version of the scientific fact of color and juxtaposition of color. I've experimented a lot, too. Uh, and uh, so let me experiment today with you on uh, the Impressionist style and find out what evil lurks in the heart of color, the shadow knows. Does anyone remember that program like I do? I've pre-sketched this because... Sketching isn't part, the, the drawing is, placement isn't part of my lesson. The lesson is juxtaposition of color. And let's see if we can get a, a, an impressionistic quality about this picture. I'm going to start out with daubs, dabs, little spots of yellow and white. Now, I'm not holding my palette. Because I'm not, I, I want to see how my colors act with each other on the canvas, not beforehand. Uh, and so let me do this. Ooh. <laughs> you think I've gone wild. I have. It's fun. Now, that's yellow and white, yellow ochre and white. Now I'm going to take white, clean my brush with terps, wipe it with a cloth, always have a handy cloth in my hand to uh, make sure that I have a clean brush between mixtures. Now I'm dipping into alizarin crimson and white and putting alizarin crimson and white between, ooh, I got a lot of alizarin there, too much. Alizarin crimson and white between the yellow so that I have a vibration a vibration of yellow and white, a yellow and violet, I mean, a color and its complement. Now, without too much contrast, I'm going to put in the shadow on this yellowish white in violet. Of course, there is a bit of contrast, but not as much as I'm accustomed to using. And into that violet, I'm going to add a darker yellow. Dobbs. So I have this interplay, the interplay of a color and its complement next to one another, hoping that they, they, they vibrate and say, I am light. I am light in paint. Now with a, another mixture. Wow. Light for the background, but leaving spaces. This is a marvelous um, thing to try one day. You don't get stuck with uh, doing the same thing all the time. Not that your picture might turn out to be something that you like. You may even throw it away, but you've enjoyed it and you've learned something. Every painting should be uh, a learning experience, not a production experience, because you're not doing it to produce anything. You're doing it to, to see if you, you, you're, you, you meet the challenge. And into that blue, I'm going to add daubs of orange, blue's complement. I was so much reminded about doing this for you because I just finished my book on color. Oh, months and months of writing and thinking and trying to clarify color. Oh, that looks odd. Why don't I incorporate some of the colors I used on this into the background? So it looks like a a presentation, a 
take some of that out. Stop it from being so much of a, a shock. Well, I won't judge. I like to get that violet in the background, too. One of the interesting things about doing the color book was I was always over at the, the printer seeing the fact that my paintings were being reproduced by just three colors plus three color plates and how they're ov they overlay with each other and, and make all the colors that I struggled so much to, to mix and make. And it was color printing and more knowledge about color that, that excited the painters of the turn of the century to paint in a different fashion. Art always reflects what's going on in this world. It influences happen in the arts first. And now, this, uh, these reds, violety reds, for the red onions. Not as brilliant and dark, or as dark a color as I see them. J just a color that I think looks pleasant with the uh, colors I've already presented on the canvas. People say, Helen, you're so free. You're so uninhibited. I said, well, what, am I, what have I got to be afraid of? They said, oh, well, you could, you know, I, I make a mess. I said, well, that's, what you, that's what's inhibiting you. You're afraid you're going to make a mess, and I don't really care. But I don't make a, a habit of disliking a, a whole group. I like, I like some of Monet's paintings. I like some of Pizarro's paintings. I don't particularly care for Van Gogh. Although some of his drawings are nice. So I like to take each thing that comes into my area of, of um, consciousness as new and say, well, do I enjoy it or do not enjoy it? No preconceived ideas. And now, the cast shadows that I love so much, that I usually put in so dark, I'm going to make them violet because they are where the light can't strike, but I'm not going to make them as dark as I usually make them. I'm going to make them in a lighter, happier vein. I always feel that when I do this uh, lesson to acquaint people with color presentation, I feel as though I'm making ice cream. I do that for? I was thinking I might end the tablecloth and put in a table. So I'm going to have an orange table. See what happens. Now I really have to step back because I have, I, all I did was try to impose color all in juxtaposition to see if I get a vibration to, uh, and I'll look, I've got to see how, what's vibrating from a distance. Now that this is all painted in, painting is, 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 a, is a great experience because, well, it's unfinished and I have to do something to it. I always think of my mother. She says, Helen, if I just wandered around the house, she says, Helen, do something. I said, I don't know what to do. She says, I don't care. Just do something. And I, that's what I have a chance to do on this. I have to make it into something. Uh, and I'm going to do so by zeroing in on some contrasts and try to uh, make it suggest this quiet, cool, light arrangement of, uh, of onions and that old canister. So with, I could smooth it all out and turn it into a, 
painting that looks very Van Wyckish. But let's see if we can't stay in the vein of juxtaposition of color. Now I'm mixing cadmium yellow and white to lighter to try to define this object shape a bit. Some people admire the Impressionists because they painted so thickly. <laughs> they say, that's the art of it. They painted thick because they, 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 they loved the paint. They felt that it expressed their deep emotion about their painting. They painted thick because they had to get thicker to pile more paint on, on in extra little suggestions of color. It's amazing how, how art critics and, and people speculate about the emotions of painters. I remember I was at the Museum of Modern Art with Roscoe and a prof art professor was there expounding about this and expounding about that. He says he used blue because he was depressed that day. So Roscoe walked up to him and poked him and he says, was you there, Charlie? <laughs> it was wonderful. We don't know. Just enjoy it if we like. As, we, as I've said before, painting is not a, art is not a matter of fact, it's a matter of opinion. And so, with a little bit of definition, I've suggested, gave an impression of that, rather than draw it in ahead of time and be careful. I've came, come to its final ef its effect with daubs, dabs, blobs, brush strokes. Trying to make the brush strokes a little bit more, um, well, part of the excitement. Now I just said that I don't like Van Gogh. No, I don't like Van Gogh. But his brush stroke was kind of exciting. Very tempting to start to go to dark colors. Someone said one time that Impressionist was born when Monet went out to paint and forgot his tube of black. Well, that's another, was you there, Charlie? Because I've examined the Impressionist paintings and I see evidences of black throughout. Of course, I'm still respecting light. That's what the Impressionists were looking for. They were looking to say, my canvas is, is, has been painted with light. It has not been painted with paint. So they too, just as I, um, are, were always thinking of where the light was coming from. Although it always looked as though they painted in the middle of the day. Mad dogs and Englishmen, <laughs> I prefer to paint where the shadows are long early in the morning or late in the afternoon. So, you might get an impressionistic effect if you paint at noon where you don't see as many shadows. When I was a lot younger, no, well, I did experiment a lot. I went through a period of putting sand with my paint because I wanted a rough texture. So then I found a uh, jute, which was a kind of canvas that was rough. And, oh, there were so many, so many things I just experimented with. I feel that we don't experiment enough today. We try to produce. Someone buying a painting is your greatest compliment. Well, don't
don't paint them to sell. Paint them to be as, uh, as wonderful as you can make them. Then selling isn't as much fun because people always want the ones that you, you think of, the ones that you've won the battle. Oh boy, what I get into on that? Here I should be thinking about what I'm doing. I am thinking about what I'm doing. I'm putting in suggestions of darks. Just little suggestions. Not as... But I'm using the color complementary theory as usual. I would say that a painting goes through three stages. The first lay in and then this middle stage, and then the end, which is so exciting. It's like going through high school. I like being a, a, a freshman that was getting it all started. My sophomore, junior year, which is what this is, is just keeping my marks up, getting the shapes right, laying in all the colors. And then senior year was tying it all together, which is going to what I'll do once I get this all done. I don't know whether I'll even graduate with this picture. I'm going to leave these. Oh, there's be so much fun to. I will try. Purple under here, under here. If you make it all wrong, it's all right. It's a mistake is a funny looking place. It's a place that is not in keeping with the attitude, the general overall attitude of the entire picture. One smoothed out place on this picture would be the mistake. One extremely realistic interpretation of an onion would be the mistake. Like that. See that? I just put in something that seems as though the paint doesn't enjoy the, the attitude uh, of the rest of it. So I have to put it in in a different way. The same stroking as the rest of it. I guess uh, it's like the we enjoy the cadence of, of a, of a musical, musical composition. So, I'm going to make, get rid of that. And let me step back again. You've heard me say before, I'm sure, that you draw a drawing and but paint a painting. And so I think I can show you on this picture, uh, illustrate really what I mean. We define shapes and characteristics of our subjects with brush strokes of color. For instance, on this charming onion, I see a a break, a darker color. We can't draw that color in, not with a paintbrush. We have to paint it in. Yes, I also see its highlight. So I've saved some of the characteristics of these shapes for last. There is that exciting sprout. I wanted them all to sprout. I've had these onions for all oh, I think about <laughs> three months. Can't, couldn't make them sprout, yet when I don't want them to sprout, they seem to do it because they don't, they, they're on their way out when they sprout. Gee, that rhymes.
So maybe it's these quick last strokes that were added on that gave these guys the name Impressionists. Because can we say that Rembrandt didn't paint his impressions? Of course, he painted his impressions too. All painters paint their impressions. So maybe I can just try to get that end by going plop. <laughs> we do this picture proves that thing I say all the time you can only get three things wrong the shape the tone and the color the success of a picture luck Sometimes I've worked on a painting and it just never gets off the ground and another time it just seems to go right. So it's important to paint a lot so that you have this opportunities for success or miss. Hit or miss. Oh, there is such a beautiful shine on that particular onion that I would just, oh boy, would I love to try to get that to look really just the way it is. Not today. I'm going wild today. When I used to teach, I used to make my students do this. So that they weren't restricted and didn't try to paint the way I paint, but just learn what I knew. We, our picture does expose what we know, what we're aware of. And now that I've added more contrast in here, the interest stays down here. And instead of enjoying the entire canvas, uh, space so maybe I should incorporate some darker tones up on this canister remember I said the other day that painting is a battle we battle between the subject and its surroundings people worry about the color of the subjects I worry about the color of its surroundings because that's the way color is shown off. I cooked up a storm today with color. And I'll teach you something else next time we meet. Or maybe I'll teach you how to make soup. <laughs> the artist's impressionist went crazy before we did. <laughs> now, oh well, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> Just have a therapeutic good time on canvas. Light, bright. Hello, I'm Helen Van Wyck, and welcome to my studio. They say that selling a painting is a is your great is a 